Now, as much as I love this Mitosaur stand that I was gifted a few years ago from Evolution, it is really strong and sturdy, but it's heavy and it's not easy to move around, particularly if you want to cut long pieces on the other side of the wall. And I've been teaching myself how to use SketchUp this week, so let's put the plans into action. And you'll find a link to those below. First things first, let's dismantle it. I'm going to use 12mm plywood. Ideally, I would have liked 18 or 20, but this is what I already had in my workshop. And what I'd done, I'd gone to B&Q, asked them to cut quite a few of the same strips for a completely different project, but this came first. Anyway, that's what you can do if you can't fit a whole sheet uncut in your car. Today I'll be making all my cuts with a circular saw, but I'm fully expecting to possibly have to add some support underneath the shelves to give it extra strength. We're just going to have to play it by ear. To build it, I'm drawing along a 12mm offcut on the edge so I know where I can pre-drill glue and screw all my pieces together. You could use pocket holes, but my ply is too thin for my old trend jig. By the way, if you've got any corner clamp recommendations for large pieces like this, then please let me know below. But for now, I'm using the old lean half of it against something while juggling with the rest. Move. It worked okay. Next, I'm using a right angle to mark and position my first shelf, and just below this will be my shop vac. As always, if it helps, you'll find links to everything that I use below. I'm also now marking my top shelf, which is set below, to allow the height for my mitre saw. But this time, I'm doing a dry run by clamping off cuts, then I could pop my shelf on top and absolutely make sure it will be level with my side extensions. I'm going to try some packers, try and get it to the right height. Get that even, then uh, screw it all together. But I'm going to forewarn you here, make sure you fully check the angles of your mitre saw. I knew my sliding function wouldn't hit the sides, but I hadn't realised yet that there's a protruding lever on the evolution saw, which would hit against the front shelf. So you could either get the height right now and write some notches in the shelf as I'll be doing, or set the shelf a bit lower and use shims or packers to lift the mitre saw up until level, and that should allow for any protruding bits on your machine. I proceeded with the rest of the build, and tested for any bowing. As I predicted, there was a dip in the middle because the mitosaur is heavy, so I decided to glue and screw some offcuts together, which will act as supports to take the weight, flip the stand upside down, and screwed directly underneath the top shelf. And another piece for the back. Another heads up though, you don't want these front and back pieces to be too thick in case they get in the way of any bolts to mount the mitosaur to the stand itself. Something else that inspired this build was having two folding brackets that I didn't end up using on a previous project. I marked the height by drawing along another 12mm offcut, and originally I was only going to use the one in the centre, then glued, nailed and screwed some support pieces either side of it. These offcuts were quite deep, allowing me to also mount to the shelf supports for extra strength. Well, that's what I'm going with anyway. Couldn't really be bothered to cut them down. I hot glued some offcuts as locator blocks to stop it from moving while I screwed from underneath. But I didn't like the slight wobble and I was worried it might affect any cutting accuracy later. And FYI, hinges also don't work with this type of bracket. So I made a quick decision to order two more on Amazon. And while I waited, I hand sawed notches for two being positioned either side. Let's just pretend there's no gap in the middle. If you're using 12mm ply too, it's quite likely you'll also need washers with screws because most of mine have smaller heads. Another job that I could do while waiting for more brackets to arrive, and that was screwing the caster wheels on with brakes. I made sure the plates overlapped where the wood joined. That should give it more strength and also allow me to put longer screws in the side pieces. And time to get the mitre saw level on top. I drew around it in case it moved and pre-drilled and bolted it down. I'll cut the excess off when I know I'm nearly done. Another thing that I did was mark and hand saw some backboard and hammered it on, again giving it a little bit more strength. But let's fast forward to when I realised the mitre saw's handle hit the top shelf. The easiest workaround in my eyes was to draw where the protruding handle needed to go, unbolt it again and router a notch with a straight bit. And bear in mind my plans are easily adaptable to your own mitre saw, and you might not need to do this. Now while I carry on fine tuning the build in my workshop, I'd like to pause and say thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this project. Skillshare is an online learning community offering thousands of classes for anyone wanting to learn new skills like woodworking for beginners, working with leather, 
jewellery making, block printing. In my case, I wanted to learn SketchUp. Now, normally when I design my ideas, I do things either on pen and paper or the old fashioned way with Microsoft Paint. And that means I've got to do my own maths when I come to make the cuts. But already I found with SketchUp, it takes a lot of that guesswork out of it and it's already sped my workflow. And since I've been following Orcs, how to design your own furniture, starting from creating a mood board to the finished product. So expect a lot more projects to come. If you're interested in learning new skills too, then Skillshare are offering the first 1,000 people to a free one month trial by using the link below. Right, let's get back to the build. Now for the bit I was really excited for, working on the fence with a stop block. I held a T-square against the fence while also hooking it on the edge of the extension piece and drew a straight line. And I was going to use a T-slot cutter for this to make a homemade rail around some T-bolts that I'd bought, or of course you could buy a track, but I found the route of its shaft was too short during a test cut. So I've decided to just rebate a shallow piece and then I'm going to glue some pieces of wood to narrow it. So I opted for a simpler way to router a rebate in some thick birch plywood, then rip some strips down. So once I've cut this bit out, then stuck this down, the idea is it shouldn't come out, unless I need to take it out at the end. By the way, if you can't find thick birch ply, then you could glue two 12 mil strips together. Now I just want to explain a mess up to prevent any confusion here. I initially decided to cut one section a little bit shorter so I'd be left with a notch for sawdust build-up. That would have been fine if I hadn't have got them the wrong way round as I wanted the rail towards the top. Or you could cut them both wider and come back with a flush trim router bit. Then use a chamfer bit and I couldn't live with it so I trimmed off the top edge making it all level. Once I'd sorted it out, I could line it up with the T-square, make sure the square doesn't go under the chamfer edge, and draw along it at the back. Now I can drill slightly bigger holes than the screws, so when I come to clamp and make sure the fence is square, the screws will nip it tight. I'm happy with that. Oh, and these won't go through the T-track. I purposely used plenty of screws instead of gluing them in case I ever wanted to replace them. After my other pull-out brackets turned up, I repeated for the other side. Although if you decide you want to use a thinner wood for the fence, you'll probably need to add some triangular supports at the back. For the stop block, you could use any block of wood, but do your best to make sure it's a perfectly straight cut. I had an offcut of oak with an existing rounded edge for the bottom, and I cut it in half to make two on the bandsaw. The profiled edge may as well stay down, in case sawdust gets down there. I marked where the T-track was, found centre, and took it to the drill press, starting with a small hole, then an 8mm hole, which worked like a charm. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> oh, nice, yay! I'm not chopping this off just in case I change my mind and want a bigger one. Yay! OK, so once I've finished dancing, it was time to do some finishing touches, like drill a couple of holes in the back for the hose attachment and the plug. And to minimise any splinters, I went over the plywood on the extendable arms with my favourite 45 degree chamfer router bit. I could have gone everywhere else really, like the stop block and stuff, but you know what? I'll leave you to have fun with that. Well, I've had to bring it out in my garden, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it properly in my workshop. It's a bit dark in there. Yeah, let me know if you do anything differently. I'm absolutely in love with the stop block. There's no more scrambling for an off cut. But don't forget, if you want to make one too, there's some plans below which are also free to my new and existing Patreon and YouTube members. Anyway, I better get back to SketchUp and plan something that I'm going to make on this next.